Kelly. Thanks for our recent company. Uh, we want to say thank you for allowing me to be here, as well as the students for allowing me to stand in front of you. Um, everything he said, of course, is correct. You've seen my story. I'm sure you understand some of the struggles I have. Um, but I'm here to give you a better understanding. Um, I actually wrote a book called The Systemic Failure of the CDCR. And in that book, I talk about the process of, of how one goes through the criminal justice system, what brings them to the courts, and I, I can't lie, it's a highly political book. I think it's one that may get me in trouble because I expose a lot of truths. And the, the, the first chapter of it, which I always go to, is institutional discrimination. And in institutional discrimination, you find a system that is for a group of people designed for them to fit. You give them poor schools, you give them poor teachers, you give them poor living conditions, and you expect them to survive. In my situation, I have the experience of going through that fire and coming out pure because it takes pounds of pressure to create beautiful diamonds. Like gold has to go through so much heat, so much fire to get the perfection that we need. And when we look at our lives as individuals, we never think that we have to be punished or hurt or faced with so much opposition to bring up the best of out of us. And in my situation, I can actually say going to prison helped me. That fire going through prison, that, that the deplorable conditions, the, the degrada degradation, the racism, the politics, it was all something that molded me because it was, it was painful. It was the experience that you can't pay for, you know? And, and the thing is, is that you're, you're going into it unwillingly, but willingly. And you have to go in there taking the blinders off your eyes and able to connect with the right people and get the right kind of information to allow you to come up out of there rehabilitated. Me personally, I grew up with a tug of war. As you can see on my video, I talked about uh, my household, my mother loving me, I'm being best dressed and going to school and having the best education. Yet and still growing up in that environment and watching the imperial courts, it's, it's a split because I go in the house with my mother, you know, she, she's on me and I'm, I'm an angel. But when I go back into these streets just to go to school, I have to go through hell. I have to actually, you know, deal with so many different kinds of individuals who are out just to get you. You can't go to a certain school because it's in this area. You can't go walk up this street because these guys are going to say something. So your life, whether you like it or not, like I said, going to junior high, is, is pressured and forced upon you to do things that you really don't want to do. But your peers are doing. And nevertheless, this was the first time that I actually spoke to a class that was uh, majority women. And I believe that, uh, I, I believe that it's an honor to be here because I never was awarded the chance to, to actually come to college. But going to prison allowed me to come here and teach students out of college. That, 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 that's amazing for me. But at the same time, it's like, it's embarrassing too. Here it is, I'm standing up in front of a group of individuals that's, that's younger than me, and you're going through the same things that I wish I had the chance to do. I, I wish I had the chance to sit in college campus at 22 or 25, but I'm sitting in a jail cell. And I don't put the blame on anybody or anything, you know, even using terms like institutional discrimination, but those situations help me understand, or shall I say, take it back, get under the standing of what we see. Because most people, they don't look to the root of what caused me to go to prison, what caused me to have these 
thoughts about uh, committing committing crimes and lusting after this and, and chasing that. The I said it on the tape. The music that I listen to, the people that I'm surrounded. But who do I blame? My mother, because she can only afford to live in a low-income community. There's no one to blame. But we have to take, I take responsibility for myself right now. And I look at my past, and I'm allowing it to, to, to build my future. My struggles, they're testimonies. I can come up here and speak diligently about so many different things, like my life in the past two years, just dating, dating alone. It's like two bucks. You put me in prison at 18 years old. You give me no education. That is the one thing that is starved in prison right now because it's overpopulated. But they don't want to change the laws. So I did 10 years in prison, get out with no trade, and I come back faced with the same things that you guys were faced with at 18, but yet I'm 27. With no knowledge, no skill about nothing. I'm still dealing with pride problems. I'm still dealing with fear. I'm still dealing with uh, insecurities because all that was just put on hold. I was on ice. But at the same time, I was building. I got some book sparks, but I didn't have the experiences. So when I come home with the right vision, the right guidance, the right direction, without the proper support to, to cater to someone who does not know what he's doing, I still have the temptations, I still have all the different uh, perils of society that's going to attack me, the politics, the racism, the stereotypes. That still is, I'm still faced with that. So coming home from prison, I went through so many ups and downs, so many tears. I had to get burnt by everybody that was trying to burn me in order to learn that they were no good for me because I was gullible. Coming, oh, hey, hi, yo, 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 we like you, we love you. Uh, can I borrow $20? Here. You know, I don't see him for six months. Chasing women, being tempted by drugs, being tempted by the chase for money, being faced with survival issues. It put me in a situation to where like I every step that I take is two roads. It's the right decision and the wrong decision. And me not knowing which one to make, I'm always subject to making the wrong decision. Why? Because originally I grew up knowing one thing, one way of living. Crime. Drama. BS. But I'm trying to change that. My struggles alone is the one from within because I got this dual personality that I have to fight with every day when I wake up. Everybody kind of got it too, but mine's a little, bo little bit more um, severe than others, shall I say, because I come from that griminess. I come from that hopelessness. I come from that group of individuals who only have one way of thinking and that's doing what I gotta do. But now I have this book smarts and so-called rehabilitation and you sit me out here and you expect me to survive on $200. What am I gonna do on $200? $200 in food stuff, $200 in cash a month? Got a Lexus V8 parked outside. Gas is $4 a gallon. You don't want to give me a job. I've been through community centers, I've been through schools, and all I get is a good job. Keep it up, stay out the way. But you send me back to that gutter with that same mind state that I've been had. It's like I'm a recovering crack addict. You sit me in a room full of crack and say, don't touch it. How? How? And that discouraged me a lot. I've done some things since I've been home that I wasn't proud of. But yet and still, I didn't slip back in that fire. 
I'm still striving. I learned that with the right vision and the right determination, you can accomplish some things. But you guys have to understand when you go out there into this criminal justice system, the kind of people that you're dealing with. A lot of people look bad on paper. I look terrible on paper. But I'm standing in front of you guys showing you that I'm breaking a stereotype. No way is you going to think a man coming up out of prison with no education is going to be able to write books and speak diligently about the intricate parts of the social system. Like, I've, I, go, I went all the way back to, you know, everybody gets paid the license place in prison. Why aren't they letting people out? They've been talking about 65%, go, uh, 85% going to 65%, giving lifers dates, and all these different things are never happening. I can tell you and show you and let you study me on AV 109. Is this release of 60,000 prisoners worth it? Is it going to work? Is it, is it effective? How are you dealing with them? I know exactly what to tell them. They don't want a person like me to stand up in their offices when they're talking about these laws and what they're doing for us because I went through parole and didn't get nothing. They told me, you are a healthy ex-con. You ain't got no mental illness? No. Are you got any physical deformities, disabilities? No. Well, we can't give you no uh, money for no trade. Department of Rehabilitation, that's what he told me. We can't get you no money to go to school. We can't get you no money to get books. We can't get you no money to get boots, nothing. So all this, I got to grind on myself with no exact experience of knowing how, but I'm still dealing with my pride and my fear. I don't want to go in there. I'm too embarrassed to go in there and ask these people how to fill out a certain kind of application because I've been deprived of that. I still ask my mother to go to the doctor with me sometime. You're down there 30, go on your own. And, and that's just a, a, a small glimpse of some of the things that I have been having to go through. And um, I, just, I just got, really want you guys to understand that when you pay attention to the people that is walking through these campuses, the ones that have the most light going on, that's a blessing. You sitting in this classroom, that's a blessing. Because whether I liked it or not, I didn't get the chance. I have several homeboys, like I said on that video, they dropped out of school because they didn't even get a chance whether they wanted it or not because they were too feared for gangs. I just want to change the system. I want to be effective. I want people to understand what we go through and the struggle it is to come up out of that fire and be pure and maintain. And that's the hardest thing to do in the world to be addicted to crime and live in a world full of crime and not do it with no money in your pocket. Any questions? Do you think that's the